Today I'm going to walk you through embroidering on beanie caps and notice that they are embroidered kind of on the edge. Same thing with our cuff one. Um, there's a couple of tips and tricks that we're going to walk you through on both of these hats and all the um, products are listed down in, below in the description and go ahead and check out this video. Here are all the products we are using in today's beanie tutorial. Again, they are listed in the YouTube description below. Today I'm going to embroider these monkeys, cute little monkeys on this hat, and it's on a hat that has a cuff. So there's a couple of extra steps that you have to take. First is, you know, you, you want to make sure your monkeys are straight up and down. Although with this particular design, some of them are upside down. So you'd probably be able to get away with it on this one. But when you are embroidering on the edges of a hat, you want to make sure that you are flipping your design to make sure that it, it is straight up when you go to fold the thing up. So the other thing you have to remember is to turn that hat inside out because notice as I do that, my mark is still there and that's the center of my design. So the design has to be flipped because I'm gonna go and take this and put it on this sticky stitch. I'm gonna show you two different techniques with sticky stitch. So I've hooped this one, I've scored and I've removed most of the, the paper. So I don't need that anymore. So now what I'm going to do is align the edge of my hat on the straight line that I prepared ahead of time. And you just align your hat on there. So if you're gonna do it like this, sticky stitch is really nice and sticky. You might wanna use a couple of clamps to hold things in place. But once you get everything out of the way, you've kind of got that nice area to embroider on. My rule of thumb is if you can hoop it, you really should hoop it. Um, so we're gonna put this one aside because it's a big enough hat to support it. But here I have another piece of sticky stitch. Cut it a little bit wider than the hat. I don't wanna go too much wider, but I do need to cover my hoop. So with that being said, the easiest way to take your paper off is you pull it, give it a little tear right there, and that'll give you a nice corner to start peeling. Good. So I need to hold on to this paper because I'm going to reuse it and I'm going to show you what I mean. So I'm going to do a similar thing and that I'm going to draw a line. You can kind of eyeball it this way, but I also want to go I want to go a little bit up, not a little more than halfway. And I want to give it a straight line. And that's my guideline. Super sticky. Now I'm going to push this in here. I want to get that nice and flat inside the hat. Now I'm going to manipulate it a little bit so that I can get it straight. I want the center of my line to be about the center of that backing. And I'm just putting the edge right on top of that line. Pull this one down. And try not to stretch your hat too much. You can stretch it a little bit because when it goes on the head, it does stretch, but you really want to avoid stretching it so much that the design kind of looks distorted. So I'm just going to go up there, make sure it's flat. Remember you have two layers. That's my top layer and I have the bottom one. You want to make sure that those are staying together and I'm not actually seeing that under there feeling a little bit of a lump. All right, so I've got that backing in there nice and straight. I can kind of see that mark that I made. You want to make sure that those two pieces are flat and there's no like bubbling underneath because now you know you're, you're embroidering on a nice flat area. So I've got a nice square hoop here that I think works quite well. And what I want to do, oh, I missed a part. I saved this paper for a reason because you don't want to get all the stickiness on your glue. So now you just lay that paper back on side to side, just like that. You can trim that excess off. Now we're going to put 
the hoop in here. That's your bottom hoop. And I want to make sure that I'm getting enough area exposed inside the hoop because that's where our monkeys are going to go right across there. Try to center your line the best you can. So the other thing we want to do is we want to make sure you've got these screws, you've got dots that are kind of horizontal on there. And I just noticed that it's not straight. So I'm going to push this side down a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the reveal of that hat. I could go up to these and see that I still need to go, I'll go down a little on this one. And as I'm holding that hoop, I'm looking for an even reveal across there, which I do have now. All right, so now she's hooped. And now to show you what's happening, I've got this down. That's going to go below our needle arm. You want to make sure that's completely out of the way. You want to make sure you don't have anything else hooked in there. And I don't. So I took my machine and have the design upside down. Can't forget our water soluble. I'm going to align her first and then we'll put the water soluble on. This is a little bit of excess here. Just going to cut her off. Sorry. Don't need it. Checking for tightness one more time. Most important here is make sure the bottom of the hat is going underneath the arm. So you don't want to be sandwiching your designs on the front and the back. So I've already traced the design, so I know I have it where it needs to be. On these knit hats, especially because there's two layers on either side, um, you're going to need some Solvi. You're going to need that to help your designs um, stand on top and not sink down. So you get definitely more crispness of your designs from that. So I am going to lay it down. I prefer not hooping it. Some people do hoop it. I like to be able to see my material underneath it to make sure it's nice and flat. So that's why I do that. But if you, if you like to hoop it and it works for you, then that's what you should stick with. So I just put one on each corner and that usually holds it nice and snug. Um, I am going to trace her one more time to make sure that I've got the easy aqua where I need it to be. So I'm gonna watch that laser and she fits in there perfectly. Um, so I haven't talked about this, but um, this is actually a border design. Um, it's hard to find um, embroideries for knit caps specifically. Border designs typically come like really small or large. This one came from Embroidery Library. Um, so at emblibrary.com is where you get this particular design. But the nice border designs, they work really well on the cap. So unlike a round baseball cap, these don't have to be digitized, you know, from the center out brim up. So we're going to go ahead and run this design. The design is done. So there she is. I'm going to keep her in the hoop while I take off this uh, salvy water soluble topping. You always want to try and get off as much as you can. At least you have to um, remove with water the quicker it goes, the less water you use. But those little spots, I don't want to pick them because I don't want to disturb the stitches. So I am going to spray. Just a little water on there. I'm going to fold all my tape in on this guy because I just need a little, little wad of that, my excess. So do that. I'm going to spray it. So the trick with Solvi is it is water soluble. You can kind of see in there it's starting to break up. But you do want to give it a minute or so, you know, at least 30 seconds. I just sprayed this, so I really want to give this a little bit of time to break down. So I'm going to treat this like it's a wad of bubble gum. And that's my bubble gum, out, bubble gum on my face. So we use the bubble gum technique and just pick those pieces right up. Because it sticks to itself. Makes it very convenient. You might find some extra there. There we 
go. That has mostly come off. Then I do like to spray a little bit more water on it. I'm going to grab a paper towel. And then I'm just going to layer and absorb as much of that as I can. Don't wipe it because it's a paper towel, so she's going to want to kind of leave lint there. So I just press it to get rid of most of it. And you can still see the color is a little dark. That means just means that it's wet. But I've taken care of that while it's in the hoop. Makes it a little easier. Now it's time to unhoop it. And we're just going to peel up on this. And there we go. That is out of there. So we have removed, so we have removed the backing and we're going to turn her inside out or right side out, I should say, right? And here comes the magic reveal of the monkeys. Last but not least, I am going to put this cover a stitch backing finisher on the reverse side because I did use the tear away. I want to give it a little more stability, but we're going to have to wait till those monkeys dry. So we'll get to that next. Sure. All right. So on this beanie cap, there is no cuff and we're going to put a really cool, pretty looking snowflake design on here. Again, it's a border design. Um, I did shrink the design. Keep in mind when you do shrink designs, you really shouldn't go any smaller or larger than 10%. So I kept that in mind when I adjusted the design for this. But we are using Sensa thread. We're going to put nice white snowflake on that dark blue. So for this process, I'm going to use our sticky stitch backing and our 505 temporary spray adhesive. So instead of sticky stitch, I'm using the cutaway. That's really what you want on your caps because I used the tear away on the other one. We're going to finish it off, but this one I won't have to finish because it's got a nice sturdy cutaway on there. So I marked a straight line. I'm going to use that for hooping and I want to spray where this adhesive is, but I don't want to spray above the line. And we're going to use a similar to our sticky stitch. So two different ways to do it. So I get my hand in there, hold that down. Not too much, but you want to be kind of liberal with it. But you want it to stick. Now all I need is that sticky, sticky backing now. Our sheer stitch, a little adhesive. So I'm going to do the same thing with this guy. Um, cause I do want to hoop. Um, I do want to hoop it. If you can hoop it. You want to hoop it. If you can't hoop it. It's too small. That's a different story. Careful again, not to stretch it too much. Using that white line there as my guide. I'm going to turn her over. Straighten all that out. Nice and flat. Start with So I don't like that. I'm going to take it off and realign it, put it nice and flat. I can kind of see the line right through there. And work that backing on there nice and smooth. As smooth as you can, it's going to hold it in place. If you're wondering why we do this, we can't just hoop, say like this, with no backing underneath it, then that's floating. So by doing this, we're going to hoop the backing and that's going to keep it nice and sturdy. So I do got to fix my lines here. I'm being careful not to stretch it too much. Um, so here we are. I've got the stabilizer behind the beanie, that stretchy knit hat using that cutaway, which is really great for this. 
I'm gonna slide my round hoop up there. Get her nice and straight. I still see the reveal of my white line there. So now as I put this in, I'm gonna use my little edges right here. I'm trying to get those right on the edges of that hat. And I think I nailed it. So once you have that hooped in there, nice and snug, feel it on the bottom, make sure she's level. And we're gonna turn her around this way to hoop her. Again, I wanna put her up here and I'm grabbing the bottom of that beanie hat to make sure she goes up underneath and she doesn't fold up under here. We don't wanna be sandwiching that. Now that I have her on the machine, we're going to trace it. So now I'm going to put the salvi on top. Grab my tape. Just little pieces. This holds it down when it goes to start stitching. The needle likes to pick it up on the first couple. And my last piece. Right over here. Perfect. Here we go. All right, the design is done. We are going to take it off. Very pretty. So those thin lines there are going to be very much visible because we use the salvi topping but these it's kind of what i call a delicate design because snowflakes there's a lot of lines so i'm going to remove as much of this as i can but i think i'm going to have to do a lot of it with the water um, you can also use steam as another way to remove this i didn't have a lot of excess so i got an extra piece of salvi here just going to wad that up in kind of a ball like form. I'm going to spritz that. Spritz my ball, my wad here. And you can actually sit there and kind of watch it like disappear. But kind of like, I don't know how to describe it, like shrinking in on itself. So you can see the holes are starting to appear. I like to give it at least 30. I think I'm going to miss that little guy up here. Give him a little water. This might, it might take two times for this one. Um, just because there is a lot in the middle. So I'm going to do one. Turning her right set up. I have that sheer stitch backing. She's a little adhered on there with the adhesive. So loosen her up. And you can take your scissors from kind of as close as you can. I like to say, what, a quarter of an inch, maybe a little more. It's always good to hold your backing and look at the fabric so you know you're not getting too close. I don't want to nick that even if it is on the inside. There we go. All right, so she's at a good point where she's just going to sit. We're going to let her dry and then we're going to show you in just a minute how great that looks when it's all dried. So our hats have now dried because we used the water on the, to remove the water soluble. You can see how nice and white that thread is now. This guy was embroidered with the sheer stitch, so it doesn't really need a backing on it. You can add a coverall. Um, we're going to add it on the next hat. It doesn't really need it, but you can add it to give your customers a little more soft feel against their head. 
So this guy, got it turned inside out again. I'm gonna add this cover stitch to the back of it. So what I did is I laid it on top with, there's a bumpy side and there's a really smooth side and that's what you want against your skin. The bumpy side is a heat activated adhesive. So I'm gonna cut it just inside those white lines so I don't have the white thread. So I did it about, I would say a half to three quarters of an inch larger than the design. You wanna give it something to adhere to beyond the design. So I'm just gonna trim that up real quick. It's a very delicate fabric. This is what you see on the inside of baby clothes very often. It's better if you round your corners as opposed to squaring them off. The square corners can kind of curl and lift. Keep your all your corners kind of round best you can. Neaten that up just a little. There we go. And there's my piece. Looks like a little extra material there. Curve that off. So today I've got the curvy press on top of the curvy, uh, totally tubular station. So it gives you a nice, you know, nice dirty area to work on. So your, your platen is rounded and the curvy press is rounded. So I think that's going to work really well. Let's give it a try. So wrap that guy on top of there. Make sure that rough side is down just like that. Then I'm going to, I saved a piece of the release paper, which acts as a silicone paper. Um, this was from the sticky stitch backing that we used. So I put that aside and then I'm just going to hold that on. It says 250 to 270 for about 15 seconds. So we will keep that on for about 15 seconds and see how she did. like medium pressure you don't really want to be jamming down on it but you want to make sure that heat is holding on peel that right off and that is a thing of beauty look how nicely that's adhered on there so we can go ahead and turn that hat we'll flip that cover up like that <clears throat> and check that out a couple of crazy monkeys there All Stitch. All the supplies, all the savings, every day.